Hello, we're back with another numerical methods example. We're going to be doing LU decomposition, and let's get started. So the problem says to solve this system of equations, and it has two parts, A and B. Uh, part A says find uh, L and U matrices, and part B says to find the solution vector X. So in LU decomposition, we're going to be doing both of these anyways, but they split it up into uh, two different parts, which you'll often see to get a partial credit. So the first step, of course, is going to be to set this up into the form AX equals B. So we're going to transform our system of equations into matrix form, which is just 3, negative 6, 9, negative 7, 5, negative 12, 1, 2, negative 4, the x vector is just the variables we want to solve for, and b will be the right-hand side of the equation. Okay, so we'll be using uh, these values uh, later on throughout this process of LU decomposition. And let's get started with that. So the first step to getting the U matrix, the upper matrix, is we want to manipulate A in such a way that we only have terms, numerical values in the uh, along the diagonal and above, and we want these terms below the diagonal to become zero. And we have to do that through row operations. And keep in mind, as we do the row operations, we have to keep track of what we're multiplying each row by because that'll give us our multiplication factors, which will come in handy when getting our lower matrix. And what I like to do is write the steps on the side so we can keep track of all of our terms. So we have 2 times row 1 plus row 2 is going to equal our new row 2. So 2 times row 1 is going to be 6, negative 14, 2. Row 2 is negative 6, 5, 2. Adding these gives us our new row 2, 0, negative 9, and 4. And we can go ahead and also perform the other step to get that other uh, 0. So that's going to be negative 3 times row 1 plus row 3, which will give us our new row 3. And writing uh, all of that out step by step, we have negative 9, 21, negative 3. And then row 3 is 9, negative 12, negative 4. Adding these together to get our new row 3, we get 0, 9, negative 7. So we can write what we have so far. The first row did not change. We have 3, negative 7, 1. And then the other two rows are 0, negative 9, 4 and 0, 9, negative 7. Okay, so you should be able to see, okay, we need this term to now be 0. And we can do that by just adding row 1, I mean row 2, and row 3 to give us our new row 3. And once we do that, we'll get 3, negative 7, 1, Row 2 will be the same, 0, negative 9, 4. And when we add that, we'll get 0, 0, negative 3. And when you look at that, that is our upper matrix right here because it has uh, just non-zero values along the diagonal and above and zero values below. And this is the uh, important part, the multiplication factors which we get based on the row operations. So notice that we multiplied row 1 by 2 to get rid of the term here and create a 0. So we multiplied it by 2. So our multiplication factor 1 is going to be the negative of that, negative 2. And then the multiplication factor 2 will come from what our next step was, we multiplied row 1 by negative 3. So the negative of that 
the negative of negative 3 is just 3. So multiplication factor 2 is just 3. And the last step here, we multiplied row 2 by just 1, add the, added that to row 3. So multiplication factor 3 is just going to be negative 1. And we'll use these three multiplication factors to now create our lower matrix. So the lower matrix takes the form 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0. It'll always have the 1's along the diagonal and 0's above it. And we're going to fill in multiplication factor 1, multiplication factor 2, and multiplication factor here 3. And keep in mind that each multiplication factor correlates to the row operation that got rid of that term. So the three multiplication factors, we have negative 2, 3, and negative 1. All right, so now we can begin to solve for the d vector with the relationship LD equals B, which I wrote for us here and filled in the appropriate values. So we're going to want to multiply this out and we'll get D1 equals 52. Negative 2 D1 plus D2 is equal to negative 34. Then we'll have 3 D1 minus D2 plus D3 equals 74. So we can begin to get the, each term d1, d2, and d3. Right away we see d1 is equal to 52. We can plug that into here. We'll get um, negative 104 plus d2 equals negative 34. So d2 must be equal to 70. And the final step to get D3, we'll substitute D1 and D2. We'll get 156 minus 70 plus D3 is equal to 74. Or 86 plus D3 equals 74, which means D3 must be equal to negative 12. So writing the whole D vector with D1, D2, D3, we have 52, 70, and negative 12. And now we'll move on to our final step where we calculate the x vector with the relationship ux equals d. And we'll fill in the d vector for what we just solved for, the 52, 70, and negative 12. And we'll find each of our x, y, and z values in the same exact way by multiplying it out. So we'll repeat the same process. We see uh, we can get z pretty easily. That's just 4. Plugging that into the equation above, we have negative 9y plus 16 is equal to 70, or negative 9y is equal to 54. So y must be equal to negative 6. And then plugging in y and z to our uh, uh, equation above, we have 3x plus 42 plus 4 is equal to 52. So that's the same as 3x is equal to 6, so x must be equal to 2. And we uh, have found our solution vector. We can write it all together, our x, y, and z terms. We got 2, negative 6, and 4. So that is our final answer, that we did all that work to get this solution vector, which you can check by plugging back 
into the system of equations, which I'll leave for you to do and for you to verify once again. Thanks for watching, as always, and if you like the video, please check out my other videos, and feel free to leave a comment below. Thanks again.